Hey guys, Shalana here. Welcome to the Bin Zone. On today's video, we're going to take a deep dive into the Netflix original movie, In the Tall Grass. Now, if you guys have not seen the movie, stop the video now, go watch it, because from this moment on, we're diving deep into spoiler territories, so you have been warned. So let's get into it. We're going to be looking at the characters, the plot, and the theme of this movie to get a better understanding of not only the story, but the ending and the overarching what the fuck just happened in this movie. So let's start off with the overall theme of the movie. And the main theme of this movie is destiny and fate. And escaping and changing your destiny and fate. A sort of a form of predetermination if you will. So let's start off with the premise of the movie. In the story we're introduced to multiple timelines where individuals enter the tall grass. Where they all are ultimately destined to die. Now this seems a bit grim. But as we go on through the movie we see that. Throughout various incarnations of these characters, death has happened and over and over and it's a never ending cycle, a sort of predeterminism, their fate has led them there. We even have a scene in the movie where Ross tells Cal that you run left, you run right, you run straight, no matter where you run it brings you back to me and that's ultimately your death. Even later on in the movie Tobin tells Cal that his sister's going to die as he's seen that happen already and she's died numerous of times so it's sort of all the decisions in their life has brought them there. Had Travis stepped up as a father and took care of Becky when she was pregnant or at least insinuate that he was going to take care of the child, she would not have gone there. So it's Travis original choice that ultimately leads them into the tall grass. Travis leads himself, Travis leads Becky and Cal, he also leads Tobin, Tobin's mom as well as Ross into the tall grass. So no matter what happens they were always destined to go to the tall grass. So this is something we call predeterminism. Predeterminism is implied in time travel and being able to change determined events is what makes the ability to go back in time so fascinating. And this movie, as they're going back to multiple timelines, it gives the impression that even though there's a destiny or there's a fate, you can also change it because every time they go back in time, like as they're in the tall grass, they're taking different choices to avoid the ultimate end, which is their death. You see Calvin running in different directions. You see Becky doing different things, Tobin doing different things, and Ross being the one constant trying to get them all into the destiny that they're destined to go into. Which brings us into another interesting theory of time travel that this movie actually looks at and that's causality. Causality is the cause and effect relationship. For example, the fact that Becky goes to San Diego with Cal and then goes missing is what drives Travis to come into the tall grass and Travis coming to the grass is what causes Tobin to come into the grass and by Tobin coming to the grass that's what causes Becky and Cal to step in. So it's cause and effect. Something happens to cause something else to happen to cause something else to happen. And Travis is the chief principle that caused all these important things to happen. The non spurious individuals cries for help in the tall grass manipulate people outside to come into the tall grass. I.e. like I said Travis calling Tobin, Tobin calling Becky and continuing that never ending time loop cycle if you will. Now what makes this very interesting is that Travis is the independent variable and he's ultimately at the center of everyone's choices. Like he's the cause of all of them coming into the tall grass and Travis's empirical association with the rock showed him the way out of the tall grass at the end of the movie that has Tobin go through that loophole. Now let's dive into the rock and the stone and just what is that? Well from what we've gathered from the movie as well as outside research we know that this is a primordial stone that was at the center of the contiguous United States as Ross so eloquently puts it in the movie. What this rock wants is unknown but we know that throughout human history that stones and sort of natural fixtures have been worshipped by ancient civilizations and that is because they have some sort of power, some sort of ability and we see in this movie that the stone itself seems to be the primordial energies of the grass and there's a very throwaway sentence that Tobin says in the movie that kind of adds credence to that. Because in the movie we hear laughter throughout the tall grass. But Tobin says that that laughter is other individuals that's not connected to them. So we know that there's other individuals in the tall grass. However, they seem to operate on a separate plane of existence. Even though the rock is the center of all these different existences. All the contingent United States. As well as the dead center of arguably all the life energy in the world based on just the amount of power that it has. So these other individuals in the tall grass are not connected with them because they're not part of the cataclysm that is Travis. Travis is the epicenter of these characters. 
Travis ties Tobin, Ross, Cal, and Becky together. So that group is in their own plane of time dimension, dilation, universe, thingamajigger, right? And then you have another bunch of individuals that we never visually see, but we hear their laughter. And towards the end of the movie, when Becky in the ground is opening up under Becky, we see people crawling out and coming towards her, like all these hands and things of that nature. And those could be potentially the other varying people that get stuck in the tall grass because from what we've gathered this stone has been at the center for a long time and these individuals are not the first and they definitely won't be the last to get sucked into that primordial energy space and because of that we can also look at the time theory of temporal divergence which is altering a past event that will create a new series of events culminating in a new timeline the tall grass seems only capable of transporting people back in time which is very interesting because like I said earlier in the video, there are different people in the tall grass that can intermingle with our current main characters and that's because they're in diverging dimensions or alternate timelines and in those timelines, Travis and his crew does not go into the tall grass and we know that using the pocket to escape and having Tobin actually save Cal and Becky stops Travis from coming in and kind of in an alternate timeline and in that alternate timeline, that stops Travis, Becky, Cal, Tobin, and his parents from ever actually going into the tall grass in the first place, which establishes alternate timelines. So that being established within the movie, Temporal Divergence is a great example of just the different timelines and the different individuals stuck inside of the tall grass. More evidence of that is supported when Travis is transported to a different timeline by two months where he interacts with Cal and Becky Unlike the first original timeline that he was a part of when Cal and Becky are already dead by the time he gets to the tall grass. And towards the end of the movie, Travis leads Tobin through a time gate and Tobin is transported to an alternate timeline where he stops Becky and Cal from going to the tall grass in the first place. Something we the audience did not witness in the first timeline that we were introduced to, to which basically stops everything from happening in an alternate timeline. Which circles back to the theme of the movie which is fate and destiny dealing with predetermined events so we know that all these events were determined to happen however travis was able to forge his own destiny such as initially going after becky and cal when he already chose not to be a part of the child's life and even in the tall grass the choices that he makes to save his family essentially from coming into the tall grass is him essentially fighting against that destiny which is ultimately in the death of his family which is another major theme of this movie and that's family. Family plays such a crucial role in this movie. You have Cal and Becky's kind of incestuous Jamie Lannister, Cersei Lannister thing going on. And then you have Tobin's family and then you have Travis who comes to save Becky and start a new family with her. And that is a major theme. We see that our choices affect our loved ones and it affects the way we make them feel as well as the way they make us feel. We see Cal's relationship with Becky. As weird and uh, as it is, it's a relationship that's very loving. We see on the other flat, but on the flip side, we see Tobin's parents' relationships and we see that Ross isn't really all he's cracked up to be and the love that he displays or he shows towards Tobin and his wife is not really genuine because of the choices that they stopped him from having which ties these two themes together which is family and destiny ross had dreams of becoming a musician and all those went to smoke because of the choices he made and the ability to provide for his family superseded his own dreams and aspirations on the flip side travis was pushing his family away to embrace his dreams so it's two sides of one coin one person actually wants to distance themselves from the family and follow their dreams while the other one embraces the family and kicks the dream to the curb and these two characters are the pinnacle characters of the movie you have travis and you have ross and they come to a clash towards the end of the movie taking themes of destiny taking your fate into your own hands family and love and putting out a clash between the two and then we see that ultimately choosing family and sacrificing yourself is the correct path if you do it wholeheartedly. Ross did not do it wholeheartedly and therefore he was doomed to keep killing people in the tall grass while Travis decided to sacrifice himself wholeheartedly for his family and then he was absorbed into the tall grass and his family was able to escape. And that ties into the destiny of Travis. He was always destined to die and he ends up dying. 
everyone in the tall grass ends up dying in one timeline or the other. And anyway, guys, that is my ending explained for the movie and the tall grass. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. If you liked the video, definitely hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button if you guys have not already. And until next time, binge on.